Okay, hello. I've been wanting to uh, do a video showing um, uh, how to make a melt the ends on a string loop for a bow. And uh, I've been tying loops. Uh, I want to tie about six loops, I think, on my bows in total. But I'm starting to get the hang of it. And uh, melting the knots always seemed to be the most difficult thing for me, as uh, I think it is for most people. And um, uh, there's a lot of videos out there that show you how to tie loops on, but I mean, there's a, and then they usually show you, you know, how to melt the loops too, but they don't, I always found they weren't that, uh, you know, informative on uh, how to get it uh, to melt really well without actually burning the uh, loop material, which you do not want to do because you'll make it uh, brittle and uh, pieces will break off the carbon and uh, it will actually, uh, not hold very well so which is the whole purpose of the melted ends so um i'm going to try and show i've practiced and i've tried to i've, I've found a way that really works well and it's i mean it's the same way everybody tells you to do it but i'm going to show you just a little technique uh how to, to melt them uniformly um this is a loop material i've been using it's two millimeters and uh it's a braided cord and gets uh a lot of people use the same size I think now it's a smaller lighter you know loop um, doesn't put much weight on your string okay now what we're going to do here is I'm going to start out and the other thing is I'm tying these loops these loops on I don't like to uh, get the flame of a lighter near my bow string it's probably a lot of people don't like to do so what I uh, have figured out and I've actually seen videos where people do the same thing they pre cut their loops to length and then tie them on and it's, it's it's a lot less difficult than it, than it seems. Um, you just have to know the length, and uh, that's what I figured out with trial and error. Where I'm just going to take, and what we want to do is we want to measure a length of um, loop material here, um, and I'm going to measure it five inches exactly. Double check that on my ruler because my ruler doesn't go to the end here. Let's get it five inches. Okay, we got it five inches, and I find that these side cutters work way better for cutting it than scissors. So we'll just cut it, get that out of the way. And uh, here's one that I've done as a kind of a practice one here. And uh, I'll try to show you how uniform these two are. And uh, they're smooth, they're even, just about the right size for good holding ability. They're hard, they're, they're not brittle because I never let the flame actually burn this. And uh, they hold no they hold really well and uh, this material ties really easy too and where it's so uh, small diameter it ties a lot easier you know uh, after you've made these up they tie a lot easier than the system of tying it on and then burning it afterwards okay so we'll start with uh, our five inch loop and what we want to do eventually here is end up with a four inch um, loop or an actual overall length between the knots. That piece there actually isn't the right one. This is another one that I had actually done up. And this one actually isn't the right length. I had to go back and double check my length before I started the video because I couldn't remember the exact length, but it was five inches. So so we're gonna start with a five inch piece here. Okay. And uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do what people usually do. You, you take and flare the end. Okay. Flare the end really good. I like to flare as much as I can. And I'll just tuft it back. Okay, I'm gonna to try to get the camera up here so I don't get the lighter too close to my camera lens. And uh, hopefully this will work out. And uh, we're just gonna hold this high above the lighter enough, the flame, so that it'll just melt it. That's the key. Don't let your loop material get down near the flame enough to catch fire and the other thing is to start rotating your loop material and you'll see the flared edge all disappear and you'll see it start to droop and it will droop one way you turn it the other way let it droop back turn it the other way keep turning it try to get the heat uniform get a little close to the flame there Starting to drop just a bit. I know I don't have this close enough to the camera to see well, but we're just going to keep rotating, rotating, 
starting to look pretty good. Droop down a little bit more there. I like to keep the knots for the the end really even. And then we'll just kind of hold it straight up. Hold it straight up. Camera's not focusing really well, but it needs a lighter here to help it focus. We've got a nice uniform ball. And then I'll just want it to cool a little bit. Bump my camera here. Just a second. I'll just blow on it a bit. And then uh, what I do then is I just take a glass of water here and stick it in the water. We'll cool it down good. And then we've got a good, hard, nice, even ball that hasn't been burnt at all. And then we're going to do the other end. So we'll just flare it out. Hard to operate a camera and do this, but I'll flare it out here. Get it all flared out. I'll try to see if I can get it a little closer to the camera this time to see the melting process. I said it's hard for me to watch the camera and watch what I'm doing. Don't screw it up. If I let this thing catch fire, it'll ruin my video. So I'm gonna just tough this back. Now get our camera back up here. And we'll try this again. Okay, I gotta keep it fairly high away from the flame. I think it's good to have the lighter on the table so you can hold it steady. And you've got to constantly watch the material. Whoop, she almost caught right there. So we've got to watch it. It really likes to ignite this stuff. This one's a little slower, doesn't want to melt very good, but... Starting to droop. Keep it up, starting to droop, getting a little heat to it though. Let it roll. As you rotate it around, you're redirecting the heat so you make it less apt to catch fire. It'll get to a certain point where all the flared edges melt off, and then it will start to solidify into a ball. A hard time getting the heat here. The camera's kind of marrowed. Can't see what I'm doing as well, but starting to come around a little bit. Drooping. Keep rolling it around. Keep rolling it around. Still not real close to the camera. I can see lighting. Oh, lighters. Ruining the light for my video. Okay. Drooping that way, drooping that way. Rotate it, rotate it. Rotate it one more time. I'm gonna burn my fingers there. Oh, it's starting to look good now. Here we go. One more droop down, and then we'll just stop. Oops. Get over here so you can see. Whoops. It's looking pretty uniform. Pretty uniform. We'll blow on it. And then we'll dip in our glass of water here and uh, cool it down a little bit. Take a look at it. It helps to have this lighter for the camera to focus on. Now we've got our two balls that are melted uniformly smooth they'll hold a knot really good and they're hard they're hard as a pool ball almost there see nothing coming off them on your fingernail tough and we will measure this and I hope that I've got it fairly close I'll measure this again and it is inside the knots a really good tight four inches it's a little on the short side just a tad but it's 
hard to get exact, but that's what you start out with a five inch piece of loop material. You end up with a four inch loop with really nice melted knots on it. And then all you've got to do is tie it on your bowstring and then tighten it up, which I'm going to stop recording here. And I'm just going to go get a bow so I can tie it on real quick and show you how the final length will end up. And uh, I've already tied a new loop on my new bow, my Maitland here just uh, well, the other day. So I'm just going to take an old bow and that I don't use anymore and, and use it to tie this on just to show you. So we'll just cut this and go to another section and I'll put the two together as one video. Okay. Okay. I'm going to zoom this back here just a bit. Now here's our loop that we have uh, melted the ends on. And uh, you can see these ends are, or these melted ends are nice and uniform. They're hard. And uh, I'm just going to tie a loop on. This is just an old uh, Browning timber wolf, I guess it is, that I've had here that I don't use anymore. And we're just going to, you know, uh, a lot of videos out there on tying loops, so most people know how to do it anyway as far as the, the way you go about it. I've got my bow back, which is making it kind of awkward for me here, but, uh, but uh, just uh, the wrong way. Okay, just go around here. And uh, we go around and we go under. Give yourself a lot of loop material to work with. So what we do is we go, actually I was right the other way, go around this way, and then around the bowstring, and then back through, okay. So there we are with our one, so our knot ends up on the outside edge. And then we basically, there we are, we'll zoom in a little bit here. And, uh, oops, we lost our focus. I like to focus very well. And then we just uh, give it a little pull, push that around there like that a little bit. Give it another little pull. Now see, we've got it pretty well where we want it. Okay. We basically got it uh, like so. And uh, we, of course, want uh, the other knot to go on the opposite side. So we want it to go around this way. And then we basically go through. Do, 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 and then pull this way down so that you're staying nearer the knot to give you the length to work with. Pull that down really good and tight there. Okay, and then uh, go around again, of course, and back through. And then just uh, pull this up and start to kind of separate it again. See, we've got it through. We just kind of, and then we just kind of grab our loop a little bit. And so then we basically got it tied so that it is uh, knotted on this side, knotted on that side. Okay, and we've got our whole length on there. Now I just gotta get another appliance here. We'll just get a pair of needle nose pliers and we'll come up around here and give that a little tug and try to uh, Camera is really in the road. Try to seat this knot. Now we'll put our needle nose through the loop and pull. Or actually, not pull. Yes, pull the handles apart, actually. Work the flies in reverse, okay. So there we are, we've got that knot's catching, that knot's catching good. We're on uh, opposite sides, 
Okay, so we're good that way. I just have to double check because I've got the bow backwards. I usually turn the bow the other way. Okay, now we're gonna slide these needle nubs right down in here good and hard. And really come on to it and pry that loop apart. Really come on to it. Okay. It's looking good. Knots are seated real good in there. Alright, I keep saying knots, I mean melted ends. Okay, they've really seated in pretty good. Okay, this really, this material really takes a good grip. And uh, of course, once you actually start uh, drawing the bow, uh, it uh, will really put some tension and set it in place. But these pliers do a real good job. There are commercial pliers that do the same thing, but these work really good. Let's uh, zoom this out a bit here. Get this over on the edge. And come on to it again. Hammer in the road. There. So what? Uh, that's what we've done now. This loop here, to me, is is a good, good size. It's, uh, you know, it's not uh, not overly long. You're not uh, going to uh, lose a lot of draw length with that. And uh, the good, great thing is it. Uh, you start out with five inches melt it, you know, that this uh, melt it appropriately and uh, the ends and uh, you end up with about four inches of loop and which, which works out just about right. So you can even have a bunch of these made up and uh, in a pinch or on a hunting trip they're a lot easier to just tie on without having to frig around and melt them. And all you need is a set of needle nose and you're all set. Um, I'm going to go get a uh, release and I'm just going to give that a little tug. Sorry, what the pause. I didn't want to stop it. So I'm just going to put my release on here. Let it out here. Wasn't prepared. Didn't have the script written for the video. I've actually done pretty good. I haven't screwed up too much. So now I'm going to uh, just kind of turn the camera around here. Zoom it out a bit. Take this old dusty bow and get this. Uh, Loop, which I've got way down on the bow here. And uh, I'm going to hook on my release here. And I'm going to give her a good pull. And that's holding really well. Really well. There's the melted ends. Nice and uniform, and like I said, I didn't bring an arrow out either, but as you can see right there, not a lot of excess, you know, space wasted or draw length lost. Just, uh, you know, should work out pretty well. And so that's it. Just, uh, you know, don't let the melted ends burn. That's the, that's the secret. Keep rotating the material as you're melting it and uh, should do okay. So, hope this helps. Uh, you know, anybody out there, you know, learn to tie their own uh, loops on. And like I said, this is probably only about the, even with the practice ones I've been working on, probably about the dozenth loop I've done. So, and you don't have to change loop very often on a bow anyway. So, that's a good thing. They really last a long while. So, unless you're, you know, readjusting it or something. So, okay. Thank you for watching.